Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the creditor's option when there's no surety or security interest involved in the deal. What does that mean? What do creditors do? Creditors lend money to debtors, to people who wants to borrow money. That's in the business of lending money. Think of creditors as banks. So the creditors, they want to protect their position. So what do they do? They ask the debtor to bring a surety someone that's going to guarantee the debt in case they cannot pay it off. Why? Because the creditor is looking for protection. In case this debtor can pay off the debt, I have someone, that a backup, that is required by law to pay off the debt. And we spoke about surety in the prior sessions. Or the creditor might ask the debtor to put up some collateral. For example, when you buy a home, what they do, they make you they make you put your home as a security interest, as a mortgage. So they'll give you the money to buy the home, but your home is a security interest. So what happens if the creditors cannot obtain a surety and don't have security interest with the debtor? What other options do they have? Well, creditors that do not have a security interest or a mortgage on a debtor's property, they can still obtain rights to the property through something called the legal process. Specifically, there are two common methods that the creditors can obtain access to the debtor's asset, and that's through judicial lien and garnishment. And in this session, we'll discuss what is judicial lien and what is gar gar garnishment. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. What is a judicial lien? Judicial lien is something related to the court, right? A judicial system. This is a legal claim against the debtor that allows the creditor to get the debtor's property, and it's granted by a court. It allows the creditor to have the right to the property if the debtor fails to pay the debt. So if you can't pay the debt, I'm going to ask the court, I'm going to show them all, the, all, all my paperwork, I have a legitimate claim against you to, to, be, to be able to obtain and sell your asset. When the court determines that a debtor owes money to a creditor and the debtor fails to satisfy this judgment, it means does not pay the debt, the creditor can take further action. What are those, what are those further action? They can request for lien and seizures of property. Liens is what? Liens is when they put the lien. It means they put a a hold. Lien is a hold on your property. So you cannot sell it. And if you sell it, they get their money first. Seizure basically take your property. The creditor asks the court to place a lien on a specific property owed by the creditor. A lien is a legal right or interest that a creditor has in the debtor's property. And it will stay there until the debt is paid. If you want me to remove that lien, pay off the debt. And how, how would that put pressure on the debtor? Well, if you own a home and they put a lien on your home, you can't sell it. If you sell it, they're going to get their share. Otherwise, you cannot sell it without giving them their share. Once a lien is imposed, the court issues a legal order, often a writ of attachment, it's called, that's the legal term, typically to a local law enforcement like a sheriff. And the writ authorizes the seizure and sale of the debtor's property. The proceed from the sale is used to pay the creditor. Now, I once in my lifetime, I used this. I used to own a property, and the tenant did a lot of damage to my property. So when I took them to court, I forced them to, I, I forced them to pay. They could not pay. Obviously, I just wanted them out. The sheriff came and they placed a notice on the on the property saying you have you know certain amount of time to leave. Otherwise, we you know the owner has the right to the property. So this is basically a court order. Another example, if John owes $10,000 to a credit card company and fails to make a payment, the company can go to court. The court might place a judicial lien on John's house, meaning if John sells the house, the proceeds will have to go first to the credit card company before John receives any money. And this is basically what a lien is. 
sometime we could have what's called a pre-judgment attachment. Pre is before a judgment is made. Why? Because the creditor is so eager to place a judgment because they think by the time the court comes to a decision, the debtor might sell all the assets. So a pre-judgment is a legal process used by the creditor to secure a property of the debtor before the final decision of a court case related to the debt. Now, the creditor is getting nervous. They want to make sure they get that property. If the creditor during a lawsuit over debt fears that the debtor may not pay, they can request a court to temporarily seize some of the debtor's property. This is done for what purpose? To ensure because the debtor is... The debtor is thinking that the, the creditor is thinking the debtor is going to sell. If the creditor wins the case, they can recover the amount owed by selling this property because they place a hold on it. Now, obviously, the court there's a court process to that. When a creditor requests such such a prejudgment, a court can issue a writ of attachment permitting a sheriff to seize the debtor's property. And before they do this, there's a hearing, and the creditor will have to show proof that the fear is real, and if they sell this asset, the, the, the creditor cannot get their money. And creditors may need to post a bond. They have to put up money to cover any damages if the seizure later deemed improper. So let's assume down the road, the creditor lost the case. Well, they have to put up some money because there are damages, there are costs related to this. So the creditor has to be almost perfectly sure that they need this prejudgment attachment. For example, Company A sues Mr. B over an unpaid debt of 50000 Company A fears that Mr. B might sell his asset or become insolvent by the time the court makes, makes a decision. To secure their interest, Company B requests what's called a prejudgment of Mr. B's luxury boat. <laughs> the court agrees, issue a writ of attachment, and the boat is seized by the sheriff. Now, the boat is put on hold. Mr. B cannot sell the boat anymore. A hearing is scheduled to ensure the fairness of this action. Company B also posts a bond to cover potential damages to Mr. B in case Company A loses the lawsuit. If Company A wins, they can sell the boat to recover the debt. If they lose, Mr. B gets their boat back and can claim damages against the bond if applicable. Protection of debtor's essential property. In most states, State laws protect certain essential properties of the debtor, ensuring that they don't become destutes. Basically, they don't want the other party, the creditor, to, to take everything, the, everything, the property, the home. So they have limit on certain assets. Why? Because they don't want the debtor to become really poor and homeless, then it becomes a state problem. For example, many states offer a homestead exemption, which protects a person's household item up to a certain value, for most creditors lien. Again, those are state law and they differ from state to state. However, this exemption does not apply in some cases, like when the property itself is the collateral for the mortgage, they're not gonna wait, they're gonna take the house or the debt related to the purchasing of the property itself, they're gonna take the property away. So those, this is a judicial lien. This is how the creditor can get their money through the court. Another method is another legal method is something called garnishment. This is a legal procedure used by the creditors to collect debt from the debtor through what? Property or money that the debtor owed to a third party. What do we mean to a third party? Could be employment, could be in a bank, could be in a financial institution. So there's an issuance of writ of garnishment, basically an order. If the debtor owes money and has assets in the hands of third party like wages from an employer or funds in a bank, a creditor can obtain a writ of garnishment from a court and this threat legally obligate the third party holding those assets to hand them over to the creditor if the third party fails to comply they can be held personally liable for the value of the property not surrendered so they have to surrender this because it's it's a legal procedure lawful protection same thing under federal law for example people that get in social security benefit they are protected from being garnished this means that creditors, if you're getting social security, they cannot take away your social security to settle your debt. Many states also have limits on how much of an employee wages can be garnished. Again, when we say states, each state is different. For example, it might be restricted to no more than one fourth of the employee weekly salaries. Why? This is to make sure that the debtor not left without any means to support themselves. Otherwise, this will be another issue for the state. Example. Let's assume Mr. Johnson owes $5,000 to a credit card company. He has a job, but he hasn't paid the debt. 
The credit card company can request a rich a writ of garnishment directed by Mr. Johnson's employer to deduct a portion of his wages each pay until the debt is paid off. The employer must comply with this writ and sends the specified amount directly to the creditor. This is an example of garnishment. Mrs. Smith, a retiree, owes money to a hospital for medical bills. She receives Social Security benefit. Even if the hospital obtain a judgment against her, they cannot garnish her Social Security because it's protected. However, if she has other income like a pension or funds in a bank, those could be potentially subject to garnishment. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources in order to understand garnishment and judicial lien as a mean, as a mean to what? As a mean for creditors to make, make, make them whole, to get their money back, basically. If you're studying for your CPA exam, invest in yourself, study hard, good luck, and of course, stay safe.